All right. Uh, if if unless there's something else anyone wants to say, um, I will say that you guys continue on for the rest of the three hours or so. And uh, after uh, what seems like uh, an unfathomable amount of time, it, it's not exactly three hours. Could be a little less, a little more. You start to see a blue light wafting from the end of the hallway. And as you get closer, you start to see that the blue light is pure gemstone. Mm. It's like sapphire, but it has more of an arctic blue hue to it. And Ooh. the walls, the stairs, the, the steps, all of it seems to be hewn from this gemstone. And there's a light that comes from it, from everywhere. There's no torches, there's no orbs of light that are noticeable. It is as if the walls and the floor themselves illuminate the area around you. And when you reach this area, you see another staircase spiraling downwards. This one is much larger. There is no uh, reason for Cole to have to bend down, but uh, it is made of solid blue stone. Um... My background, my born on the streets background, um, Pearson probably in his younger days stole a few gems or tried to pass a few off as fake. So I'd like, if possible, to just uh, take a few moments to examine these floors and walls to determine whether these are actually giant gems or just something that looks like giant gems. Okay. Go ahead and give me uh just go ahead and put you know what I'd say put your whole background in that because okay. you're kind of a that's kind of your bread and butter is knowing what's real and what's not in that sense. So that <laughs> plus your uh, uh, recently plus yeah. either your wisdom or your intelligence and your level. And we'll go intelligence and my level and forge on the streets 20. Okay. Um you can tell that it's not real sapphires. It, uh, for, for lack of a better word, and you've only seen this a few times, it is as if it was constructed. Uh, it was mm. somehow, and you've seen, you've seen fake gems before, but fake mm -hmm. gems are usually a stone that looks similar cut to mi look like a, a gem. Yeah. The, every once in a while, you have seen gems that were manufactured somehow. Uh, as in the stone was created to look like that. This is what you're seeing now. You've never seen this abundance. You know that it would be quite worthless to anyone who knew their gems, but it is close enough that it would fool the layman. Gotcha. All right. I'm good. All right. So you guys continue down the stairs. Um, you can keep the torches. However, they are very unnecessary uh, to see. The, there is light uh, everywhere uh, around you. And yeah. you continue down the stairs for about another 10 minutes or so. And when you... Oh. Oh. And we're dead. He walked us <laughs> into a trap, everyone. This is oblivion. GG. <laughs> It was fun. Well, 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 look, I got an extra life, damn it! I know how this works. <laughs> hey, hang on a second. If you guys could zoom into the center where your characters are, for some reason my dynamic lighting is not working exactly uh, the way it should be. Uh. I can't zoom anywhere. I mean, okay. zooming into the center is just the center of blackness. Oh, you uh, only see black. I see yep. stuff. Yep. Hang on. Let me make sure that your piece has. I'm zooming in the internet to refresh this shit, but. Uh no 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 no! I got it. There we go. Special. Is there anyone else who can't see anything? There we go. Uh, I Here. believe it. Hang on. Cole, Piff, cannot check. see. Got it. Some for some reason, roll twenty. You, I have to check every uh, every token to say has sight, and for some reason, roll twenty will not save that. Unlike half my characters. Um, <laughs> give me a second while I figure out why my uh, dynamic lighting is being a bit funky. Here we go. I'm 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 gonna quick uh, run to the bathroom then. We got a moment. Sure. Actually, you know what? I'll just do it this way because I'm not gonna take a whole session for that. If you guys just do me a favor as players, just zoom in to where the you see the center, and that's all you see. the The other stuff's not gonna tell you much anyway, but better safe than sorry. So, uh, we'll wait for Kriana to get back before I give this description. Okay. <laughs> So how's everyone's day? 
So God. listen up, here's a story about five people who traveled in a blue lab. Oh my god, <laughs> I was gonna make an Eiffel 65 joke too! You beat me to it! It's blue, ba da dee da ba da Abadi-abadai. Come on. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Holy shit, this is pretty... Where are the blue aliens? Oh, I have God, a no. waifu, and she is so blue. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't Indiana Jones this, please. <laughs> what? Oh, I got that aliens. Means. Oh, God, let me erase the third level. Hang on. <laughs> Crystal oh, for alien a second, I skull think idea. Let me erase um, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Christmas. <laughs> all, all, like, and I'm like, yeah, do that. Erase. Yes, it. please. <laughs> you, you guys, you guys, you guys get to like the third level of the dungeon. All it is is ants and crystal skull aliens. <sighs> ants. Or yeah. those freaking like tribal people coming out of walls. <laughs> Oh, yeah, All like right. were they just sitting around there like forever? Did, yep. Like they were in the walls, so it's not like someone could be like, "Hey, I, hey, I see someone coming. Let's all hide." Like someone was fucking committed. They were waiting in there for years. I like to think that they just lost track of time. <laughs> <It's spooky. laughs> huh? So this is all like one single solid, like blue thing, right? Yes and no. Uh, and I'll, I'll describe this more when Kriyan gets back, but you can definitely tell that the material of the floor and the material of the walls are quite different. While the floor looks more um, transparent, mm. uh, you can't see anything underneath it. It eventually, it's like looking into clear water. Eventually it just becomes blue, but you, f you can see down into it. Uh, the walls, while they are made of what look like sapphire stones, they are unpolished so they don't shine it looks like what a raw sapphire would look like yeah a and the luminescence is coming from the walls or everywhere it just looks like it's coming from everywhere hmm. it, it, it's it's impossible to tell where it's coming from i don't <laughs> i've extinguished okay. my torch <laughs> yeah i will too <laughs> i know we're waiting for a crana I, but i shouldn't say impossible that's a wrong word to use in a pen and paper game but it would be th there is no apparent source of where the light is coming from cool and uh the uh i will say this the stairs are the same material as uh as the walls mm. cool I'm gonna just keep saying cool. <laughs> cool. I look cool. up. <laughs> we skip it. We skip ahead to like two hours. This is not cool, Squee. This is not cool. I this approve. is some bullshit. I approve. <laughs> yes, I approve as well. What is up? <laughs> up is um the roof far above you, and when I say far above you, I mean about a hundred feet at least. It's a domed roof, and it has the same, um, more translucent, like the floor. The polished, mm. translucent gems. Does I, it so look, now, mm -hmm. just squiggly moving, and that um, acidic slimes are just going to drop from the ceiling at any moment? Roll for initiatives. Yeah. So did we descend for three hours, or did no. we descend and then go straight for you, a while? You descended a total of about 20 to 30 minutes, but the three hours oh. was going straight. Still, 20 yeah. to 30 minutes of solid pace, that's that's a good way down. Mm -hmm. it's a yeah. Good way down. It is indubitably. Hey, Squee. Mm -hmm. About the time... Uh, when abouts were the um, golems made? Was it with the invasion from the orcs? I mean, I I wanted to know. Right. Uh, no, I, no, 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 no. Um, well, king. the dwarves have had mechanical golems for centuries. Uh, are you talking Cent about Tolan's golems, which are he was a prodigy, so his were uh, better. Um, they were made. Okay, if I remember my history right, the orcs pushed back the dwarves about sixty-five years ago. Mm -hmm. They were made about thirty years before that. Okay. I could be slightly wrong. I'd have to recheck the history real fast, but uh, it, they were made about 30 years before the orcs took over half of Moonhelm. Okay. Interesting. 
They were made towards the end of Tolan's life. Yeah. Which is why he kind of passed away shortly after. Yeah. Kriana's back. Yay! Hi, Hi Krianers. Hi, everyone. All How's right. it going? It's going. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go. You All remember right. Baby Junior. Perfect. I did this yeah. time. <laughs> Let's not expect it to be a habit, though, because who knows? Mm. Giving you a thumbs up. I appreciate All right. it. All right. So uh, I will I will kind of go over what I described with them. Um, when you get to the bottom, the, the stairway itself um, was was completely enclosed as you got out. So basically, you didn't see this room until you actually uh, got to the bottom, hit the floor, and exited out. So when you get out, what you see is a blue column of these stones. Uh, that leads back up to the roof. And um, all around you, you see uh, blue walls and floor. The floor and walls are different. The floor is very polished and kind of translucent. And it looks as though, though if you were to stare into clear water deep enough, like eventually you, you just see blue, but you know, you can tell you're seeing through some of it. Uh, this, the walls themselves, however, are unpolished. And they look like what you would expect a roughed sapphire to look like. The roof is about a hundred feet or so above you, and um, it is the it's dome. It's a domed roof, and it is the same transparent, polished sapphire blue as the floor. Oh, this guy really liked the color blue. Yeah. <laughs> but I beat, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to not think of that. All right. So, um, give me one second. While I make sure of my, uh, I'm looking sure just in case it matters. Um, oh, whatever. I'll look it up later. I can't find the exact time the orcs took the kingdom from them. Uh, anyway, so you guys get down there and uh, you see in the room you are standing in the blue column of stone. And you are in a perfectly circular room with six large silver metal doors and when I say silver they look like they are engraved silver Okay. they are very tall they are about twice as tall as coal is and about uh, three times again as wide uh, and that is all you see in this room for now do these silver doors look like they have any like are they how do they open there is no clear way to open them. There's no doorknobs. There's no nothing. Just there's there's engraving, but the engraving okay. is just designs. It's not any lettering or pictures or anything of the kind. Ah, hmm. uh, Pearson's gonna go over to this one and give it a push. With that, you will hear from up above you. When you push it, it does not move. Mm -hmm. uh, and you hear from up above you. Oh, no, 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 not yet. Hang on one second, one second. And then uh, from up above, uh, somewhere up above in the roof, there is a small hole that appears. And from falling from the hundred feet to land right in front of you rather gracefully is this figure. Let me go ahead and uh, make it bigger so you can mm. all see it. Whoa. It is a mechanical golem <laughs> that uh, looks extremely well constructed. He's wearing a cape and a hat with a feather in it. Um, he looks just like he does there. He lands extremely gracefully in front of you with hardly a sound. And he stands up to his full height. And then he says, Oh, it's been such a long time since we've had visitors. Am I to assume that you're going to attempt the labyrinth? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, You're going to be trying your father's challenge. Oh, fantastic. Oh, where are my manners? My apologies. And he will bow deeply. He says, my name is Gearsworth. I will be your guide through the first level of this labyrinth. I am here to answer any questions that you may have, though understand that there will be certain questions that I am not allowed to answer. Rest assured, though, I am not against you. I, more than anyone, want you to succeed, and I will do everything I can to help you. This oh. labyrinth is a test, not a barrier. I understand, although I am slightly distressed. Yeah, Pearson walks over to Drawlin and um, points at him with an open palm. Do you not 
recognize this man? Surely your father, who, who breathed life into you, your creator, would have told you about this man. His dear, dear nephew. He, he looks at you for a long time without, uh, without any movement. And then after a while he says, Are you okay in the head? Yes, I am. Are, are, are you feeling all right? Tolan, father had no family. Uh, are you... Are you sure? Because, I mean, this is big up on the surface. Yeah. Although the, what he did not, of course, he's not his nephew by blood, it was more of an adoptive nephew, you understand. After a moment, he pauses and he says... Oh, is this a game? Am I supposed to play along? Okay, hang on. <clears throat> okay. Yes, of course I know him. Good. And he holds his arms out wide. <laughs> uh, wonderful. And like Pearson will give like just a knowing smile. There you go. Yes. Um, go ahead, nephew. Say hello to, I guess you're kind of related now. Right? Finn will nudge Drawlin with her elbow. <laughs> Drawlin looks at Gearsworth and says, How about you just lead us to the first level, please, Gearsworth? <laughs> <laughs> Gearsworth, Gearsworth uh, kind of almost whispering to Pearson and says, Are we still playing? Uh, yes, we're always playing. I don't understand the point of this game. You, you'll find out at the end. You, you... No, oh, well... Father surprise. always said it's other dwarves were weird. Fine. Um. Yes. Hi, nephew. I will, of course, <laughs> lead you through the first level. Let me give you what information I can about the labyrinth. And he kind of tries to collect himself and switches his uh, his hat down in another bow. He switches his hat off and takes another bow and then puts it back on. This labyrinth is comprised of three levels. Each level very different from the one before. I will be your guide through the first level. As I said before, Father created this as a test, not just a barrier. Now, make no mistake, this is a difficult test that no one has passed and many have not even survived. But I assume by the fact that you're down here, you are more than willing to try and take the challenge. Yes. That is a yeah. good assumption. Hmm. Excellent. Good. Then, let me get straight to it. And with that, he waves his hand, and the blue stairs that you uh, actually travel down begin to rise up into the ceiling. Uh, they begin to kind of break apart mechanically. And you see, as they break apart inside, there are gears and cogs and, 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 and supports that of the same blue material that seem to make it fold in on itself upwards. And where it used to be, you see another door a blue door that looks similar to the first door you entered, but much fancier. He says, and Gearsworth looks, points to it and says, the door to level two is right there. Obviously, though, it's not quite that simple. There are six stones which must be touched. Simply that. Touched with a hand, a foot, an ear, whatever you feel is most appropriate. Uh, but you must touch them and you must ignite them. At least five of them, though I have heard that if you light all six, it's in your favor. I've never seen anyone light all six. Five, though, is enough to unlock the next level. As you notice, the rooms around you, there, there are doors to six rooms. I believe it is fairly logical to, for you to infer that there is a stone for each room and a challenge for each room. As we go to each one, I will tell you what I can, but as I said before, for obvious reasons, there will be certain questions I simply cannot tell you the answer to. Why not? It wouldn't be much of a test if I gave you all the answers. Hmm. But I mean, hmm. your nephew... Mm -hmm. Drollin stops giving a confused look and switch to glaring at Finn. Finn will just finally slump her shoulders forward and just say, ah, forget it. Just take us to the place we need to go. I, I have a question. Gearsworth uh, holds up a finger. Yes! You, tall dwarf in the back. 
he, he's going to Keen's going to look at himself and okay um so they need to be physically touched by us or would and he takes reaches back into his quiver takes out an arrow would one of these work Oh, no, of course not. You must physically touch them. And, and he points to Drawlin. You would have to remove your glove, or I suppose you could rub your face on it. That would work, too. Whichever you prefer. So skin to- contact, got it. Indeed, skin. skin contact. Your soft skin, not mine, and he taps his metal cheek. Not my hard skin. Okay. Gene's going to put the arrow back in his quiver. Mm. And, that was it. All right, and with that, he will say, "Ah, yes. Well, then, if there are no further questions, pick a door." Okay, well, guys. How about we just roll a d6? How does that sound? Okay. That works for me. So, starting One. clockwise, the top right. Oh. <laughs> okay. <then. laughs> yeah. Calm down. Boom. Okay. So. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Why don't you give us a roll there, Cole? Okay. I can't do it after you rolled a one, because anything I said by one would have been. So one, two, three. Hey, the one that I tried to push open. How yes. symbolic. Mm-hmm. Sure. This one. All <laughs> right. says this door. Gearsworth will say, an excellent choice. After you. And as that, he opens his arms wide, and the doors slide, silently start to slide inwards. And uh, let me go ahead and just move you guys to the other side. I didn't actually make doors for this. So I'll just move you guys to there. And you see uh, an almost completely empty room. Let me explain exactly what you see. This room, just like the same one before it, is made of the exact same material, has the domed ceiling far above you. And up at the top of the domed ceiling, there must be a good... 120 feet above your heads perhaps a little less perhaps a bit more you see attached to it a red gem ringed by a golden base and he says there it is quite simple honestly just uh touch it so are there Come any traps now. in here this is far far too easy and frankly your father the revered and um, wonderful Tolan would not make a challenge this simple. There's clearly something else at work, right? Come on, you can tell us. He cocks his head and says, you really think that? Oh, great, you must do, you must be, you should do really well at this then. No, I assure you, there is no trick to this room, no hidden traps, no nothing. Simply touch the gym up there. Did your father tell you to lie to us? I am uh, insulted. I no, understand. Don't be insulted. You're a very devoted son. I wouldn't hold it against you. I understand that you have no reason to trust me. Perhaps in time that will change, but I assure you, I have no reason to lie to you. All right. Cole and Keen are going up ahead. Finn yeah, I'm letting them. Working. I'm letting them. Yeah. <laughs> how, how high is the ceiling again? About 120 feet. Shit. Uh, <laughs> anyone else got any rope? <laughs> I do. What do you want with it? I have a grappling hook. I have okay. 70 feet of rope. Mm-hmm. We, we can <laughs> draw and looks up. Are you going to try to f- attach the grappling hook onto the gym? Mm hmm. Maybe? <laughs> you know Speak aloud that your was plan, my first King. <laughs> My first okay, you're right just... there. Why don't you touch it? It's Wait a second. It's 120 feet up in the air. It's 120 feet on the, in the air. Oh, it's in the air. Yes, it's attached to yeah. the dome ceiling 120 feet above us. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I wasn't listening. <laughs> no, I was listening. I just I was too busy trying to outsmart the machine. There's a gold base at the top of the dome. The gym is basically attached beneath that gold base so that we can see it. It's 120 (laughs) feet suspended in the air. There appears to be, at least by initial glance, nothing else in the room. The room is made out of a 
At least the dome probably a smooth construct. I don't know whether you can shoot an arrow into that unless there's crack sufficient. In order to throw a grappling hook up, you're going to have to catch it upon the base on which the gem is attached. Hey. I was going to try it, at least. But okay, I'll just toss my stuff back in my backpack then. I'm not no, telling I you stuff that's right. I'm explaining it for the people who did not understand the situation. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. I miss Jerry. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll lend you. I have 60 foot, feet of rope. Sure, let's just Give try and mm -hmm. throw it up and see if it catches. I mean, if it doesn't, then we lose nothing. May I make one suggestion, King? Yes. To have Cole throw it. Not only is he very proficient at it, but he has the strength in which to hurl it such a great distance. You know, that is a really good idea. Cole! Can you do this for us? Do what? You will have grappling hook grappling on hook. the base of that gem. Mm -hmm. Try and try and get it so that the the claws catch. If you can. He has keen eyes. I he will, he without a word, staring at the um, gem, hold out his hand towards okay. your grappling hook. Yeah, Boop. towards uh, in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. 120 feet up. Oh boy. Yep. Well. Yep. 30 feet of rope. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. Alright. With, with a continuing whirl of the, uh, the grappling hook just to gain momentum, he's just going to stare at it for a while. Just so he's not wildly doing this, he's going to very much look at look at it, try to make sure that he has this right. Swirling the thing will actually make sure that the wind's okay. And with a great heave, will throw a his the grappling hook towards the uh, jam. Okay. Uh give me. A strength check plus whichever background you think would be most... Make a case for your background. Uh-huh. And then your level. Uh, let's look at my paper. Does throwing count? Yes, I would think throwing counts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, case sure? well made, sir. Oh, oh my God. Uh, well, Cole, you Cole are to... you are a big murderous <laughs> skill monkey. Is what you are. <laughs> yep. If just opened up like an entire container of salt and poured it all on the table in front of Squee and stuck up his middle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Unbelievably, the grappling hook shoots up towards the gym and with pinpoint accuracy catches on the lip of the gold ring at the base. Now, my final suggestion is... Oh, all, first of all, fantastic job, Cole. Fantastic. Yeah. However, I think we might need a little bit more grace someone who's very skilled with climbing but is also very light where we do not have to worry about her buckling bucket you know the the grappling hook bucking under the weight of say Cole or myself or Keen or Drawlin Finn if we yeah. promise to do our best to catch you I have a blanket here that we can kind of stretch out as a way to catch you if you were to fall uh, would you mind scrambling up that rope and touching that gem Finn gives Pearson kind of this look, and then she reluctantly says, "You guys better catch me." And she'll, she'll. I will unfurl the blanket and demonstrate that if each of us takes a corner and pulls it taut, holding it relatively high above our heads, it will create a very good um, surface for for her to fall on. I'll perhaps reassure her, her with a few tales of me having to make hasty exits out of three-story windows while my friends were doing something very similar. If we want, I can also unfurl my blanket as well. Guys, make it it's fine. Double I, blanket. I yes. can... Finn, you can do this. blanket. Yes. You got this. We believe <laughs> right. in you. Yeah, okay, cool. I will, I will do it. 
All right. Besides, I mean, in that Shalta's uh, labyrinth, you navigated invisible um, passageways in which there was no bottom. At least in this case, you know where the bottom is, and we're here to catch you. Thank you, Pearson. <laughs> Finn, Finn looks like she might be getting irritated, but it's hard to tell. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, let's get her off the rope, and we'll see. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, almighty. So, uh, first, do me a favor. <laughs> you know what? Okay, I'm going to do it this way. Roll me a skill check using your parkour, your dexterity modifier, and your level. All right. So that is... <laughs> <laughs> he does that every once in a while. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's actually really, really good. Then I am going to... You definitely... Uh, Past the check I was looking for, I'm going to roll a quick hundred sided die. So, good. Okay. Uh, it actually holds. Um, and you get about halfway up the rope. So you're about mm, 60 feet above the ground. People are starting mm -hmm. to look uh, rather small. <laughs> Don't look down. Yeah, Finn's not looking down. Oh, I'm giant. You get Finn. big. And um, when... all I see is the perspective. Like we can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool. And uh, <laughs> when you get about another ten feet, so you're about eighty-five, let's say ninety feet in, up the rope, the uh, the gold ring that the grappling hook is connected on squeaks, and um. It comes loose to the point where you you slide for a second and then stop in a jolt, and you hear. Finn Here will you go, freeze. Finn. <laughs> Finn, might I suggest she, something? Finn, um, we'll keep going. <laughs> Teleport. <laughs> teleport the last few feet. You can't Shh. teleport ninety feet. Uh, thirty. Feet. She's thirty feet away. Yeah. Oh. All right. Finn will. The hearing keen. Kind of curse in her breath and and teleport. And. Okay, it's gonna be kind of a split second sort of thing here. She's gonna teleport up to the, the crystal, mm -hmm. slam her hand against it, and then activate her flying shoes. Okay. You uh, touch the crystal. It starts to glow a soft red, and you hear a small chime sound. And then you activate your flying shoes, and you've got about 15 seconds of flight. She is going to soar back to the ground. All right. Um, soar, not quite the right word, but definitely 15 seconds <laughs> is more than enough time to... To cover so. most of the distance, uh, certainly uh, enough to cover to about ten feet or so, where you're, you're you could gracefully land with your skill. So, with that, when you alight upon the ground, do me a favor, roll your uh, re-roll your magical item because you're not in combat. So, uh, is that a eleven or higher, and you can use it again? Oh, cool. Nope. Nope. All right, you cool. won't be able to use it to fully up. And also, this is a good time to point out, uh, because we are not in combat, and your teleporting is an encounter ability. Mm -hmm. I will let you use it as many times as you wish. Basically, as long as you guys rest for a few minutes between each time. But I'm going to, this just, just this once, limit it to a hard 60 feet. Okay, that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Limit it to Perfect. a hard 60 feet. Meaning she can teleport 60 feet. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. right. So um, um, you hit the ground, and uh, you hear mechanical clapping behind you, and gears were set. Oh, well, you did make that look easy. I am quite excited mm -hmm. to see what you do with the rest of the challenges. Mm. Yep. What are the other challenges? He looks at uh, you and cocks his head and he says, I know. Oh, you head. wanted me to tell you. I'm yes. afraid I can't do that yet. Why not? Well, you are welcome to go find out for yourself. And then oh, he actually I can't steps no, no, to I'm the side. Why and... you can't tell us? Come on, we're all friends here. You want us to succeed. Um, you said it yourself. GM? Mm hmm? I would like to untangle my 
my grappling hook, please? Okay. Um, I'm just how are you going to go about doing that? Pull the rope back and forth to see if I can unhinge it. Okay. Big I freak. will definitely let that happen. I will say this. With 120 feet, you are going to have to be trying really hard to get that momentum to get up that far up the rope. Uh, yeah. So it can still happen, but it's not going to be a foregone conclusion. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a bit. Give me a... Um, I would say this one would be a strength check plus... Oh, I would say you're a mercenary background. I'm sure you've used grappling hooks in your day. And yeah. um, your da- your strength check, back, uh, mercenary background on your level. All right. Because basically you've got to kind of whip the rope and hope that whip travels 120 feet up. And it does beautifully. Woo! <laughs> and the grappling hook falls directly towards you. Um, I'm going to get out of the way so I don't catch it. It, in my skull. <laughs> it bounces on the floor with a loud clank. Yep. It <sighs> seems no worse for wear. I'm going to un uh, untie the ropes and go, yep. Still, after you're dead, Shalta, you're still helping me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, coil up my rope and everything. And, and with that, uh, as you're doing that, Gearsworth will turn to Pearson and say, perhaps it would be best to get this out in the open. This test is not here to determine if you are good at placating people or trying to be their friends. I'm sure you're a very nice gentleman, but... Oh, I'm very nice. Yes, but I have rules I must follow, and um, I can see that you're a very friendly person, and while I find that quite admirable, it is not going to help you in this test. Well, funny thing about rules, you say, because I know of a few rules... I know the rules of the Dwarven Kingdom demanding that Tolan use his own sons and daughters to fight for them. I know that they they instructed him to do so, and Tolan refused. Rightly so, I might say. I would argue that your father doesn't follow rules to the T, so I don't see why his son necessarily has to do either. Think on that for a while while we move on to our next challenge. As you as you walk out, and by the way, you guys can go ahead and walk through the uh, door again. He'll say, "Oh, oh, father followed all kinds of rules. They were just his rules." Hmm. Okay. So another D six. This is one. Sure. Uh, Grimith, would Finn, you roll with threes. One? Finn, roll. A six. So I guess six. that would be Boom. top left. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can go ahead and move through the door as well. Just kind of push through. And now I'm on fire. <laughs> uh, so, when you get through this room... Oh, hang on. Let me uh, find you guys again. <laughs> when you get to this room, uh, you see pretty much a duplicate of the room you were in before, with one exception. Now there's absolutely nothing in the room. Nothing whatsoever. And Gearsworth says, ah, yes, this room. This room I can explain a little bit about. The Mm -hmm. gem you're looking for is certainly here. And you must find it. And you should find it quickly. The longer it takes, the... uh, Well, I'm not sure how else to say it other than to be blunt. The more dangerous it will be for you. Can we leave this room whenever we like? Yes, you can. You can always come back and try it again later, or simply not do this one and try and do the others. It is 100% your option. My magic ring of clarity, the one, the gold ring that grows warm, mm-hmm. is it warm? No. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm, actually, hmm. Mm. Let me think for a second. You know what? I'm actually going to say yes, because I'm a little unsure, and I'd rather err on that side than not. Okay. Something tricky is going on. That ring that the goddess gave us. The ones where there's present. Okay. Which means it might be hidden from us from plain view. My first suggestion is that we all go hand in hand, and we kind of scour through this room like a rake and see if we don't bump into it. Then if that doesn't work, I say we search the walls. 
Okay. I, I am going to, and bear with me for a second, I'm going to have you guys roll for initiative and act in turn as you search this room. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So give me a second. Let me clear the initiative order. Shalton, no! Shalton, You're no. dead! And, and, and Gearsworth will, will, will say, as you say that, he, he, he will say, just so you know, the more time that passes, the more challenges... Difficult things will... get, yes. No, he's like, I'm trying to be more helpful than that. Things will come to attack you. Mmm. Great. Fantastic. He nods. Glad he could be helpful. All right, so I got a 15 plus 12, so that's 27. Now I just gotta have myself roll initiative. All right. And hey, Cole, we're 27 brothers. Let me go Ooh. ahead and uh, put this in descending order. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and uh, Shit. add something. That's, that's fine. I'll just correct it now. Alright. I'll bring it up if it actually matters. Alright. Alright, so, um, uh, basically, uh, for this room, we're going to go with the. Uh, unfortunately, 13th Age, obviously, we don't generally use movement because it's almost never a real factor. In this case, it kind of is. So we will say that for, for, for this section alone, don't 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 think this matters or applies to most fights, but thirty feet's a standard move, sixty feet's a double move. Simply because, okay. like I said, for thirteenth age, it doesn't really matter that much. In this rare situation, it does. Okay. All right. So, is the plan that we're gonna do it together? Or are we gonna split off? I would I wouldn't mind doing it together. We all just join hands and move 60 feet. So that way we can tag if everyone consents, we can just group all our initiatives together and just do it. Seems fine to me. Mm -hmm. Like each of our turns it'll just be like you know what I mean like we're we're working together as a group for these first initiatives. I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't know okay. how else we're going to like I don't find this fucking I don't thing. Yeah, idea. yeah, and this entire room full of well, sapphire things. Do yeah. we do we want to try doing the other rooms and come back to this one? Uh, we'll we can we'll leave at any point. If something comes up and it's hairy, then we can just get the fuck out. Okay, sounds good. Okay. I mean, I, I, we'd be kicking ourselves if it just took three rounds and we found this damn thing, right? That's yeah. true. We can at least humor the room for now. <laughs> yeah. Room. Oh, room. All right, so we're just going this direction? Straight ahead? Or? Yeah, yeah, I say straight ahead. And Gearsworth okay. calls after you guys. It's about waist high, so good luck. Okay. Finn's going to be flapping her arms then. <laughs> Which waist? <laughs> he actually looks at you for a moment and says, Oh, that's a good question. Uh, your waist, his chest, he points to Drawlin. <laughs> mm. Either way, we have a high likelihood that we'll, we'll bump into it. Yeah. Um, and I'll hold out my hands? Yep. I think I think we're all just gonna do that, Squee. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. So round one. So what we will say, and this one's fairly easy, is that your your tokens represent five feet of space. So we will say that holding your hands out equals about five to six feet of space. Mm -hmm. So if your token touches something, I will let you know. Okay. If you guys decide other methods, then we will figure out stuff then. Okay, so we're just going to move ourselves forward 60 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Baby Junior between us, too. That's yeah. adorable. Yeah. yeah. Baby Junior is yeah, just spreading out her body as much as she can. Okay, tell you what, guys. I'll just hold it out 60 feet, and you guys can move it along that line. Okay, that? so we can go... Right, 60. We can, okay, so Finn will... Oh. Uh, bump. Sweet. Thank you. Should we hug any wall, or are we just going to go down to the center? Uh, I figured 
we would. Mm, yeah, let's just go down the it. center. Fuck it. Yeah, we'll go down the center and then we'll loop around. All right. Uh, we'll call that turn one. Um, mm -hmm. When turn one ends, you see little holes appear in the side of the walls, like little square slits appear, uh, but nothing comes out. You just see that, like, it's almost like a shutter. You and these, these holes appear on the walls to your right. How many holes? Right. Uh, six holes to your right. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Well, let's just keep going. To here. I'll hold wait. it out for everybody. Okay. Out of curiosity... Oh, wait, no. Cole can only sense magic from the other... That dwarf guy, right? He can't sense magic. Uh, he's never... Uh, I, I would have so. to actually like sit there and try to feel out magic. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he would have to concentrate. Yeah. Just uh, okay, making Rana, sure. Here. Okay. And Cole would be around here. Okay. And it will be right there. Well, bam. Okay. So that's turn two. And from the hole closest to you at the end of turn two. Mm -hmm. You see, give me a second. I have to get to the right layer. Uh, really quickly, is mm -hmm. it all right if I mark where we've been? Uh, how would you plan to do that? Your character, no, right. your character would actually have to find a way to mark it. Ah, right. Let me get rid of that. Okay. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. So. Uh, from the closest hole appears, and these are just going to go last for obvious reasons. Uh, oops. <laughs> it helps if I move them to your, t your layer first. They look like spinning balls. Metal balls with uh, blades that oh, come out of this. them. And there are several blades. And they start moving directly towards you guys. And they are fast little buggers. They, uh... Give me a second... They the first one can get to coal. This one gets to about here. This one goes this way. This one circles around like this. And this one goes like that. Uh, the only one that is going to attack is the one that got to coal. The others are kind of circling to try and surround you. So, uh, coal, this is versus your AC. Oh god, let's not roll a d100, shall we? Oh man! <laughs> yes. Oh jeez! That's what you're facing. All right. Um. So it is. And they look like they're made. Unlike the sapphire and stuff around you, these look like they are made of sturdy bronze-colored metal. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, they basically roll along the floor until they get close to you, and then they pop out those blades and just start spinning at Cole for twenty-eight. I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. 18. 18. Wow. 18. Wow. 18. Wow. I am. I do not know how that happened. Just consider that an 18, Cole. My apologies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I started describing things and did not let go of the up arrow. How does brain work? How does brain work? Okay, so it misses. Okay. So there I'm you go. That they get hit. <laughs> there yeah. you go. <laughs> Definitely fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, it's funny that you say that because I think we should get the fuck out of here. There's no point in us getting worn down and bloodied over this horse shit. I say we try the other rooms. I'm all for that. Right. Yeah, I don't really see any point or value in it, attempting to find a invisible gem hidden around here, around this yeah, entire yeah. expanse. It could easily just be attached onto the wall or ceiling. I don't care enough. Yeah, yeah. That's true. yeah. All right then. All right. I guess uh, we should all just flee as best we can in our initiative order. Yes, mm -hmm. it is Keen's turn. Okay. So I'm going to move thirty to here. All right. Um, is there a specific one you guys want me to attack? I went. I went to fucking leave. I don't care. Yeah, about don't bother attacking the them. Just try to outrun them. We can't kill bronze after all, right? Just yeah, fucking go, dude. Trust me, because I'm just okay. taking a double move. That's my turn. All right. All Finn. right. 
Is oh, anything yeah, engaged teleport. with me? Nothing is engaged with you, uh, though if you want to avoid attacks of opportunity, you are going to have to make a long way around, probably like towards Pearson and down. Or teleport or use yeah. some other ability. Uh, I will teleport to... I can only go 60 feet, right? Yes. Okay, so... Like, there. However, because of your special ability... Here, I'll, I'll mark it for you. Remember, you can teleport and then move. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Bye, guys! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, like... There. Right, I can double move? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like, here-ish. And then... Baby Junior, I guess, will take the long way. Okay. So she'll leap. Let's say about 20 feet that way and then 40 feet that way. Sounds good to me. Boop. All right. Pearson. Oh, fuck you, whatever you are. 60. Oh, let's see here. 30 and 30. 30. Okay, so that's like there. Thank you, whoever did that. Very kind of you. Thank you, kind of, sir. Pretty. Okay, thank you, thank you. Again, I have to just zoom in now because I zoomed out to measure, but someone else did that for me. Uh, there. I'd be kind of right by where Keen is anyway. Yeah, boom. All right. That's okay. my turn. Cole, it's your turn. Oh, boy. Um... If I roll to disengage, can I run past this guy? Oh, which other? Which guy? The one that's engaged with me. Yes. If you if you roll to disengage, you, you you can consider yourself just run away from him. I will even also say that this one down here mm. is far enough away that if you do kind of like a like that, you should be fine. Mm. All right. For a terrain stunt. Oh. Oh, the escalation height um, is zero. So. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to take the attack of opportunity. Let's see how long this is. I'm actually going to sprint towards this wall. And I'm going to be moving down this thing. Alright. The attack of opportunity is a 25. That hits. Alright, that is going to be 18 points of damage. 93 points of damage. Good luck. <laughs> I'm going for a party wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so 18 mm. points of damage. Alright, uh, then it is Drollin's turn. I'm done. Alright. <laughs> done. <laughs> done now. Go next. W oh. and, and, hmm? Derp. Nothing. I just remembered something. Alright. Let's see here. Is there any that are... Uh, maybe... Not really. Okay. Uh, then here's what happens. When he sees that you are all obviously retreating away, Gearsworth waves his hand off and the little mechanical things close back up into their balls and start heading towards the wall. And he says, It's not my intent to kill you for no reason if you are not Don't attempting care. this challenge. Next room. Yeah. Yep. If you're not going to help us, then that's fine. Yeah. Just do your job. He nods and uh, ushers you guys to the next room. Okay. All right. So six is shitty. <laughs> six, <laughs> yeah. Six Let's not avoid bad. that not one. <laughs> now you can roll a one d four. Okay. Oh, good call. Well, yeah. That's why I said it. <laughs> uh, oh, ho, 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 ho. All right. Fine. I I will roll the one d four. Please do. <laughs> Two. It's not a really condescending. I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, good. I didn't take it that way at all. Okay. Cool. All right, here's number two. 